great to have a great a big crowd here today. Uh, this is really cruel, but it says if you serve food, they will come, right? <laughs> Christians love to eat. We also love the fellowship, and we love to worship. And so we had a chance to do everything today, so it's a wonderful day. Uh, we'll announce the uh, the speaker, Ron Gilbert, who's going to be here today, is here today, already spoke in the Sunday School Hour, those who missed that, missed out on a great message. But he's going to share with us some information from International Bible Teaching Ministries. And uh, I could describe some of it, but I think I would not be getting to do the justice that he will. But we have been blessed. I will share one thing, though. We have a handful of ministries that we've been supporting in the last several years. We don't have any ministry that reports back and shares with us nearly or communicates nearly as well as you do. So we appreciate that. It's nice to be able to pray with, have knowledge of, and be blessed by the ministries that are taking place in God's name. So other than that, that phrase, I'll let you share the rest. Um, we continue to have a number of people who have been ill or affected either by COVID or the shots themselves or health issues. It's good to have Dan with us here today, but Marilyn is, is having some really rough days. She's still open for visitors, so please take that opportunity when you get the chance. And Dale and Marilyn are not alone. There are others who have weaknesses. Uh, Randy and Janice are not going to be able to be here today because Randy's sister's had a couple of strokes. So they're going to visit and take care of that. And it's just, uh, there's a lot of tough things going on. But nothing like the blessings that we have through our Lord. So we've got a lot more to look forward to. And I was thinking this morning, this is kind of a sad thought, and yet it's, that's us. When people are ill, and we know that some people are going to have to pass, it really bothers us. Then I wonder, what about our faith? Because <laughs> what we're promised is so much better than what we have here. We're just selfish on this side of the thing, you know? So, with that, let's go to the Lord in prayer and be thankful. Lord God, as we come to you this morning, we have so much to be thankful for. We can be thankful for the things that you provide for us in this world, the material things. We can be thankful for things like health and, and love and what you allow us to share within the brotherhood and sisterhood in, in your name of Jesus. We can be thankful for our families and the Especially in our age, we can be thankful for our children and other blessings that we have, our grandchildren. There's so much that we can praise you for, but none of these come close to measuring up to the spiritual side that you provided called grace through your son Jesus. Let us be truly thankful as we go into this time. Help us to be aware of the messages that have been shared or are to be shared from your word. Let us be praiseful, most of all, of the fact that you sent your son Jesus to this earth to be grace for us and to be shed his blood and have his body broken that we might have everlasting life. Nothing could be greater than what the future is ahead. Lord, as we share together now in this hour, we ask that your Holy Spirit would dwell among us and strengthen us and prepare us to go out into the world as missionaries do and as we need to do daily and share the love and light of your son Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. if you have the emblems number 410. 
Let us sing. He leadeth me, O blessed God, O words that can be comfort fraught. Whatever I do, wherever I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. For by him 
all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him, and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Through him I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Let us go ahead and bow as we give thanks for the bread. Heavenly Father, God and creator of all, the giver and sustainer of all things, we come before you now in worship. We take this bread. It represents the body of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we take and eat this bread, Father, we worship him. We remember his sacrifice and his love for us. May our hearts and minds always be focused on him as we partake of this bread. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray now for the cup. Father, we continue to worship. We take this cup. Its contact, contents represent the blood of your Son. His blood which was shed on a cross. His blood which cleanses us of the stain of sin. Help us to be remindful, Father, of the love that you have for us, that you gave us your only Son to save us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Let us sing. Christ for the world we sing. The world to Christ we bring. With loving zeal, the poor and bear, the faith of God. Definitely Joe Jenkins. Definitely Joe Jenkins. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. This tune is familiar with another tune. <laughs> And I got it kind of confused with that other two. Mm. Mine is gone here.
that help us individuals and congregations. This congregation has been very good to us, helping us uh, with this task of taking the gospel to all the world. It's always been the case that some areas are more fertile than others. During the time of Christ, some cities he went into, he would stay there well, alive, and people would come and uh, glad to receive him. Other areas, they would drive him out. Uh, the Apostle Paul, same thing on his missionary journeys. Sometimes he'd stay a year or two at a place, and many people would be obedient to the gospel. In other areas, they wanted to kill him, run him off, get out of here, we don't hear you. That's been the case of the history that you and I have lived. During the 1960s, and I'm sure many of you are aware of this, that the Church of Christ was the fastest growing religious organization in the United States. We were growing faster than any other organization. And uh, we've, we've slipped as of present, but that may come back one of these days. We may live long enough to see the Lord's Church once again be a very fast growing uh, religious group, or the truth being uh, spread throughout the world. In areas around the world, there are some areas that are very fertile. You know, Jesus talked about the fields being white unto harvest, and that's the case with many other places. <clears throat> we were working in several different nations in Africa. We were working in Malaysia. We try to go to <clears throat> Malaysia uh, every year. We've missed the last two years because of COVID, but we hope to get back to doing that again. We have started a distance learning school, training uh, gospel preachers and Christian workers around the world. We have uh, several hundred, I think around 500 enrolled in that, and uh, that's going great as well. So we're going to give a brief report about some of our work and some of the things that's going on and uh, share the good news uh, with you uh, this morning. All righty. If I can get this thing to advance. I'm having problems with my. There it is. Okay. Maybe it'll. Let me back it up and see if it'll. No. Some kind of other. It's not going to work. So you'll probably have to advance it manually for me. Uh, we thought, because of the COVID, that last year would be a very slow year in our work. And uh, we found that our preacher schools that we're working with and our men got out of the big cities. Those areas were closed for gospel meetings and things, and they went out to the rural areas. And we had one of the best years that we've had. Now, these statistics that we have on the uh, screen here <clears throat> represent about 500 men who graduated from our preacher training schools and probably 100 and something faculty members with those preacher training schools. But uh, they reported 6,749 baptisms last year, 5,877 restored, 184 new congregations were established, and 8,234 new <clears throat> Bible correspondence course students enrolled in our program. We graduated 75 gospel preachers last year, 33 in March, and we've got four more that will be graduating in April, and then in November there will be a host of others to graduate as well. <clears throat> yes, I'll take some water. I should have brought some with me. Thank you very much. <clears throat> this uh, pollen and allergy stuff is starting early over this year. All right. So let me see if I can. I thought it's moved for ground. Okay. I'm just, I turned it off and back on to see. I don't know if it's the battery situation, or what, but anyway, we do it that way. One of the projects we work on every year is getting Bibles into the hands of those that are in need of the Bible. They say that the average American home, uh, especially the Bible Belt, has six or eight Bibles. You might go home and count yours, see if you're average or above average. But uh, not so in many of the nations we work with in Africa. Most of the nations we work with, there is a Bible society there, and they have translated the Bible into the local languages. And there's over 700 different languages in Africa. Uh, most of the languages in the world are in Africa. And uh, this is a picture from Salwezi, Zambia. 
And we have purchased Bibles, and these are Bibles in uh, Chichewa. And we're handing them out. Some of these are new converts, some of them are members of the church that haven't had a Bible. Uh, those Bibles average around 10 U.S. dollars a piece, 10 or 12. That's not much to us, but in the poverty area, that's a tremendous amount of money. We had a congregation to give us recently $10,000 for Bibles, $5,000 for the local languages, and $5,000 for English Bibles that we ship over each year. Then another congregation or two added a little to that. So recently we wired $8,000 to about six or eight different locations in Africa, and they've already started purchasing those. Should be around 800 Bibles in local languages that will be purchased over the next few weeks and given out. And then we'll try to ship four or 5,000 English Bibles in the next few months as well. All right, go ahead to the next one. One of the projects that we have as well is our Bible Correspondence Course program. And uh, we have two different phases of this. One is on the internet, and then some are postal students. But our internet program, we have about 150 volunteers, members of the church from the United States, Malaysia, Africa, other places, that agree <clears throat> to be teachers and grade these lessons. There are six books in our series. Each lesson has, or each book rather, has about 15 lessons. And we print for several of those as well. But right now we have about 65,000 students from around the world that are taking classes and studying the Bible with us. As we said, our 150 volunteers are grading those and working with that. Sister Linda Hill uh, sort of makes the assignments, checks the internet every day, and we're sending those out. And then a few congregations help us with the postal ones. And we started out <clears throat> trying to print those and we would have a student in Africa or India or somewhere that wanted to take a correspondence course, and we would mail them the two booklets uh, for one lesson. The first one is a booklet for them to study, and then the test booklet for them to fill out. And it cost us about $6 to mail it over there. And then they would fill out the test booklet and mail it back to us. It would cost them about four U.S. dollars to mail it back to us, which they couldn't do. They didn't have the funds to do that. So we came up with another plan. We decided that we would print thousands of the correspondence courses and send them to the 12 preacher schools that we're working with. And the 12 preacher schools would hand them out to the gospel preachers in their area. And the gospel preachers would carry them out in the villages and local areas and hand them to people and say, here, you want to study the Bible? Fill this out and give it back to me and I'll bring it. That way, we pay the postage to ship it over there and the people that study the Bible don't have to pay anything. And we printed last year, there's 12 books in a set, and we printed uh, 2,000 full sets of those, so that's 24,000 booklets, and getting those shipped. Brother Garland Robson that does Seek the Old Paths, uh, he does our printing for us. We usually print about 200,000 gospel tracts a year, and booklets, uh, things of that nature that really uh, help those individuals. We printed two sermon outline books uh, this uh, past year, one uh, series of lessons on the church and another on the parables of Jesus. And we sent those uh, out into the, uh, the various places in Africa. Now we, we're trying to do what Paul said in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 2 of faithful men being able to teach others. I know that physically speaking, I won't be able to go to Africa for the next 50 or 60 years. That just won't happen. But what we're trying to do is establish these preacher training schools, build the buildings for them to have facility to preach and teach the gospel there, and then find churches in the United States that will sponsor the schools. Of the six schools that we've started, we have found congregations that will sponsor four of those schools. We're still looking for the two others, and hopefully we'll have that, and we get all these buildings built that we need to build, and find these uh, churches that will support the schools, and then when we're unable to go and we're out of the picture, we'll be still training gospel preachers for many, many years to come. This is uh, Sima Fumba, that's the name of the community, the area. It's north uh, east of Livingston, Zambia. And this is the first preacher training school that we started in Africa. And this is one of our older ones. We've had about 50 men 
to graduate from the school. I think they have about 21 or 22 students there now. This next slide shows you where they started. Uh, this is the first building that they had. Uh, this was a little building that uh, they put goats in and uh, raised goats. They moved the goats out and put the preachers there. And for five years they met in that building uh, trying to train gospel preachers. The, the six men that were working as instructors at the schools were graduates of the school in Livingston, Zambia. That's one of the oldest ones. And every year when we go to Africa, we stay there in Livingston, Zambia, and we teach six hours a day at that preacher school. <coughs> we go out on the weekends and do gospel meetings. And most of our schools that we've started, the teachers that teach at the school are men who graduated from the school in Livingston. That way we know the men, and we know the education that they got because we were there helping teach them. And they're good, solid, sound men, and they're doing a good job. All right, go to the next slide. Uh, we built a new church building here. We actually have three buildings in Simfumbo. We have one building that has a dorm and a classroom and a small office. Then we have a cafeteria library, and we built this church building. This is one of the largest buildings we built in Africa. But there was a congregation, one of the guys that taught at the preacher school, uh, was preaching for a congregation up the road that their building was falling in, and they had about 175 in attendance. And we asked if they would move the congregation to that building. We built a new building, and they agreed to do so. And we used that building for seminars. We bring back the graduates of the school. We have youth days. We have training sessions. We have part-time preacher training there. And then when we go each year, we have gospel meetings there. We've had. 2,000, we've had 3,000 in that building. Uh, the last time we were there, we had 5,000 that showed up, and we could put 3,000 in the building, and 2,000 were on the outside. We had a little megaphone, loudspeaker, battery power, and people were outside the windows uh, looking in and listening. So we had a good crowd there and a uh, lot of uh, baptisms. There are gospel meetings that we conduct in Africa are different than what we do here in the United States. Typically, our meetings are Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and a half a day, Sunday. We start at 7 in the morning, and we go to about 10 at night. In a typical gospel meeting over there, folks will get to hear about 31-hour sermons and about 6 hours of questions and answers. So that's almost equivalent to a year's worth of preaching to a lot of folks in the United States. And we'll have 40, 50, 60, 80 baptisms. But they're there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Sunday, and living and breathing every day and every hour and learning from the Bible. And when they're not in our sessions, they're talking about the Bible as they camp out and stay at that area. All right, go ahead. This is uh, one of our sessions. We go out, do our gospel meeting. The teachers at the school are preaching in Livingston go with us. There's vehicles there that we help purchase from the school, and we use those vehicles. We go out over roads that are so bad our average speed is about 10, 15 miles an hour. And the roads are very, very, very bad. They would wash out during the rainy season. That's the school building that you're looking at there, the green and white building with a dorm on the left end, office in the middle, and classroom on the far side. And we take all of our things that we need out. We take books, we take tracts, song books, and other things. I take uh, drinking water with us. Although we did drill a well out there now, so we do have good, uh, clean water out of that area. We've been able to raise funds to build, drill about five wells at the preacher training schools and some other areas as well. All right, go ahead with the next one. This is uh, Lalongwe, which is the capital of Malawi. Now, Zambia is about the size of Texas. Malawi is about the size of Georgia. So it's a lot smaller uh, land-wise, and uh, looking at the internet and studying some things, one of the poorest nations in Africa is Malawi. Uh, the income uh, is lower there than just about any other nation. And when you read the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you know uh, who followed Jesus and who received the word readily. It was the common man, the poor man, and that's true there as well. So we built this uh, School. We bought about six acres of land. We put a security wall around it, and we built three buildings. It took us a few years to do this, 
But uh, the building that's to the right is the dorm and the bathrooms on the right. We have about 25 students there at school. And the building to the left, the, the right hand side of that building is the classroom and the library is on the other side there. And there's another building over to the right. The compound is laid out like a horseshoe. You can't see that building, but it's about the same size. It's a cafeteria, kitchen, and offices. And uh, we built uh, those buildings. We have uh, things on the inside there. Uh, they grow vegetables. We have a well so they can irrigate and raise a lot of their own fruits and vegetables. We planted a whole bunch of fruit trees from day one so they're eating papaya and mangoes and things of that nature. Now at school, we have about 100 and something little chickens. So they're uh, having plenty of eggs and fryers to eat. They have several rabbits. They eat a lot of rabbit in that part of the country. So we've got about 20 or 30 rabbits, so they have a lot of rabbits to eat. And uh, we met, go ahead with the next slide. We met at the school building. We usually start a preacher training school in an area where there is no congregation. And then we start a congregation, and they meet at the preacher training school until they outgrow it. And then uh, we build a building. But this is uh, the graduation last November. We had nine men to graduate. This is a relatively new school. This was our second graduating class. I think we had seven or eight to graduate the first time, and we had nine to graduate this time. We just heard from uh, the graduates recently, and since the guys have been out, the first graduating class, the second graduating class, I think they had about 160 baptisms last year and uh, established two or three new congregations, so they're doing really a good work. The two men on either end are the instructors. They're graduates of the school in Livingston, as I mentioned. And then also, most of our preacher training school men have gone through our distance learning program. We offer a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in Bible online. And these guys have gone through that and continue their education. So they're very, very knowledgeable of the Word of God. We'll head to the next one. Uh, this is the church building that we built. Like I said, we met in the classroom as long as we could, but we outgrew the classroom. Now, I've got to update my statistics there. But uh, this is the new church building that we built. They had a youth day, the first month that they were uh, in the new building. They had 700 and something teenagers to show up for their youth day. And they had uh, uh, over 100 in attendance. But this congregation, they got in the building last August. And from August to the end of December, they had 46 baptisms and nine restored. And I got a message from them this morning. They had four baptisms today. They had uh, three ladies and a man that had been baptized. So now that brings the total up to 88 baptisms in seven or eight months. They're averaging over 10 baptisms a month at this congregation. And one of the reasons they are, of course, they've got a guy that preaches for them, but they got 20 two preachers or 25 preachers that are members of that congregation, the preacher school students. And those guys go out on Saturday and set up Bible studies and door knock and invite people. So you got a congregation with about 25 or 26 preachers. And that, that helps. The members are working too. The preachers are not the only ones doing anything. But that doesn't hurt a congregation to have 25 preachers going out in the community door knocking. So they're doing a great work there at that congregation. This was a gospel meeting they had back uh, last fall with 580 in attendance. They had 14 baptized and four restored. But we started the program about a year and a half, two years ago. With the preacher schools that we're working with, we get funds that are coming in that provides food for the students, uh, housing, a little bit of uh, financial aid for the students to be able to buy their shaving equipment, deodorant, toothpaste, things of that nature. But there's no money for evangelism. So we found that for about $300, two or three of the instructors in one of the preacher schools can take three or four of the students and they can take public transportation and go out to the rural areas, maybe stay in a little hotel, a little money for them to eat. And about $300 covers the expense of these guys to go out and conduct a gospel meeting. So we started an effort of raising funds and asking individuals and churches to help sponsor a meeting in Africa. And we've had over a hundred gospel meetings 
sponsored in Africa over the past year and a half, two years, and we've had over 400 baptisms from those gospel meetings. So they are really doing a good job going out, and these young preachers uh, learning the Word of God and going out with their zeal and enthusiasm, preaching and teaching, and just doing a great, great job. Uh, this is Sulawesi, Zambia. This is the copper belt. They're still mining copper up in the northwestern part of Zambia, and uh, we wanted to start a school there. Now, you may say, why so many different preacher schools? You, you got the one in Livingston. Why, why would you need six, eight, ten, twelve preacher schools? Every two years, the Livingston Preacher Training School gets applications from guys from several African nations. And typically, they get applications from around a hundred men that want to go to preacher training school. And they've got room for 25. So you tell 25 guys you can come to school and be a preacher, but you tell 75, we don't have any room for you, no finances. Well, I don't like turning away 75 guys that want to preach the gospel. We don't have that problem here in the United States with our preacher training schools. They're not turning away people because they're overflowing. But over there they are. So we started four. We got four schools now in uh, Zambia. So we can put 25 at this school, 25 at this school, 25. We, we can count it 100 preachers a year. We got four in Kenya. Same thing. You just have one or two, and you can only do 25 students. Now we can do 100 in Kenya. We got one in Tanzania. We got one in Uganda that we're working with, one in Ghana and West Africa that we're working with. So uh, we've got plenty of schools there, and we've got men that are being trained. This is a little building we built, a preacher training school. Then we had the students living uh, at school. We didn't have any faculty members, so we needed to build two staff houses. We built this small one. Uh, this is just a two-bedroom. And then the next slide shows uh, our brother John. He's got five children. He, he bought a piece of land that joins the school. And we helped him build that house. That's a picture of it before it's finished. And they're moved in now. All right, go to the next one. Uh, they, we, we build these buildings in stages. They didn't have a cafeteria a kitchen. And the ladies that were cooking the food were doing so out in the rain during the rainy season. Sometimes it rains so hard the fire would go out. The ladies were trying to cook the food, sitting with holding a newspaper over their head with one hand and that wasn't working out real good so uh, we told them we know you need a library or you need rather a cafeteria and kitchen but we just don't have the funds right now be, be patient we'll try to raise the funds and we'll get that to you uh, we got that they're finishing it up that's an older picture the outside of it's plastered the inside of the ceiling's up they're putting the solar panels on top so they have the electricity getting the stove refrigerator making the tables, so they'll be using that within a week or two, and we need one more building that we need to build there at that preacher school, and that's a library. They don't have a library. They have several books, and they're in boxes, but they need a library and then a school office, so they can have filing cabinets and keep up their records and a copy machine and <coughs> some of the other things. <coughs> All right, go to the, the next one, please. <coughs> this is the current student body at Saul Wesley. group of uh, men that are there. I think they'll graduate in November uh, preaching and teaching. Uh, go, go to the next slide there. Uh, one of the projects we work on also is bicycles for preachers. <clears throat> we try to keep enough bicycles at the preacher training schools that on the Lord's Day the students can come in pairs and check out bi bicycle each. And they'll ride those bicycles and they'll go out in the rural areas and one of the young men will teach the Bible class on Sunday morning for a small congregation, and the other one will preach the sermon. And it works out really good because a lot of little congregations don't have preachers. They like it when the preacher students come and preach, and the young men need the experience. So it's good both ways around. And then they come back in, check in the bicycle. The school at Saul Lacey <clears throat> reminded us that we didn't send them funds to buy bicycles when their last guys graduated. So recently we had to send them $1,100 <clears throat> to get the new uh, bicycles in. And they started going out and preaching and teaching. And they told us that the first two weeks after getting their bicycles, they had six baptisms and 15 restored. And I told someone those bicycles paid for themselves pretty quick. 
Eleven hundred dollars worth of bicycles, and within two weeks they had six baptisms and fifteen restored. That's been a month or so ago. I haven't heard of the latest statistics, but they'll use those bicycles, and then when they graduate from the preacher school, we give each guy a bicycle. That's their transportation, and they'll use that bicycle to go out preaching and teaching the word of God. Well, we had seventy-five to graduate back at the end of the year, so that's seventy-five hundred dollars in bicycles. We had thirty-three. Uh, to graduate in the months of uh, March, I think it was February, March, so that's uh, 3,300. And we'll have four more to graduate here in a few weeks. And then this fall, there'll be another 100 and something to graduate. So this is a project that we do year round. Those bicycles cost 100 US dollars each. And we have individuals that help us, some in this uh, congregation, I think, have helped us in the past to buy bicycles for our. Preachers. That's a very good project. Okay? Go ahead with the next one. This is the little congregation that's meeting at Saul Wesley. As I said, we start the preacher school, they meet in the classroom, and within a year or so, they'll outgrow that uh, little classroom. So we need to be looking for an acre of land that's very close to the, where the preacher school is and go ahead and purchase that, and then start working to raise some funds. Probably cost around uh, $20,000, $25,000 to build that little church building. So we'll need to be working on that over the next few uh, months as we can. All right, go ahead with the next one. This is uh, Brother Edward that's kneeling there. He's the director of the preacher school, one of the instructors. And uh, this is a gospel meeting they had there for the new congregation. And there are some of the folks that attended that gospel meeting. All right. This is in Gwazi, Zambia, which is back close to Livingston. We're about three or four hours north west of uh, Livingston, Zambia, out in a little area called the Nguesi Valley. We started a little school there. It's a smaller school, but we've trained several guys out in that area, and they're doing a good job training preachers there. Uh, there's the current uh, students. These guys, these four, will graduate, as I said, in June. So we'll be printing their diplomas and sending them to them here in the next few uh, days. Hope we need to do that next week and get them to them. We're hoping to go in August. It's looking good that we might get to go this year. We've got some friends that just got back uh, last week, or this week, from Ghana, West Africa, that made that trip. So we're hoping we'll get to go in August to Malawi and to Zambia. All right, go ahead with the next one. This was uh, graduation uh, last November in Bonet, Kenya. This, this area is known as the Great Rift Valley. A beautiful, beautiful area, a very fertile farm area. And uh, the Lord's Church uh, has been there for several years, but they've sort of drifted away, a lot of them have. And we started this preacher training school there in Bonnet, Kenya. They're doing a good job uh, there. They're meeting in a little old church building. I think it's in the next picture. Now, that's where they're meeting. That's their classroom. That's their dorm. They sleep on those concrete floor. That's their cafeteria. That's everything. Well, we purchased about three acres of land. Go ahead with the next one. We put a security fence around it, and we have drilled a well. Go ahead to the next one. I think that shows the platform that they've got the well up on it, getting ready for the water so we can start the brickwork. And then we sent money for the footer and foundation. And they're just getting started with that, but we're at the end of the rainy season. The rains will stop about the end of April, and they've been trying to deliver material out to them, and the trucks have got stuck a time or two, so they decided they wouldn't wait a couple more weeks and let the rain stop and the uh, ground firm up a little bit so they won't get stuck to bring out the material. And we'll be building that building. That building is about a $70,000 preacher school building and we've raised the funds for that and they're hoping to get started on that just as soon as the rain stops. All right, go ahead with the next one. I'm, I'm showing now just several pictures of gospel meetings. As I said, we, we send the funds over to do the three thousand or three hundred rather dollars per gospel meeting. We sent uh, I think it's six thousand eight hundred dollars enough for about twenty two gospel meetings uh, recently, and uh, we'll be hearing we're getting reports just the past few days of uh, six, eight, ten, fifteen baptisms. We'll be getting those reports over the next few weeks. This was one uh, they had back uh, several weeks ago in Bonnet, Kenya, and they had a few baptisms there. All right, go ahead with the next one. This is. Uh, also, Bobak Kenya. If you'll notice the water 
And some of the pictures that we're looking at, sometimes the water is sort of clear like that, and sometimes the water is super, super muddy. And the reason for that is when it's the super, super muddy water, it's during the rainy season. And right after we had the rain, of course, all the mud washes in to the water. So it depends on the time of year, so what the water looks like. All right, go ahead. This is uh, a few miles south of Mbeya, Tanzania. And this is the school of preaching that we built. And we did so in a church building. We first built a church building and started a congregation here. And there's two rooms on either side of the church building. They use one as a dorm. And then there's a building over to the right of that that they use as a storage building. And then behind that, there's a uh, house for the uh, director of the school, Brother Whitley. And we purchased 20 acres of land and got a good price on the land. And the chief of the village was so impressed that we wanted to build a preacher training school in his area, he gave us 10 more acres. So we own 30 acres of land. That's enough for them to do a little farming there and raise some corn and vegetables and other things. So they're training gospel preachers there in Leia, Tanzania. All right. There's the front of the church building. Uh, this, they speak uh, Swahili there. This is Kanisa La Krista, which is the Church of Christ in Leia. A congregation, uh, I think they probably got 60 or 70 in attendance. Uh, go ahead. And another project that they're doing there in Leia is uh, caring for the orphans. Uh, they have a daycare where they bring in uh, four and five year olds or five and six year olds, I can't remember which. And they teach them to read and write and to sing songs and all. They provide two meals a day for them and uh, help them a little bit. I think there's about 30 in attendance. Now, these little children are orphans, but they're fortunate in that they have a place to stay. A lot of places in Africa where we visit, there, there are street children. Their parents are dead and they're, they're just living on the street. The government doesn't take them in and care for them. But these little children, they're either staying with grandparents, aunts and uncles, next door neighbors. There's somebody they have to go home to every night. And they're going and studying the Bible and learning. And then their caregivers, the people who run this, are talking to their caregivers and setting up Bible studies and trying to teach and baptize them as well. But it's a great program. They're having their daily meal of rice. They sit in a group and eat with their hands out of a common bowl. That's the way the folks do in that part of the country. All right, go to the next one. This was a little temporary <coughs> structure that we put up, or a new congregation that we helped start in Coloma, Zambia. We're back near Livingston. We're about an hour and a half north of Livingston, Zambia. And uh, this was during the rainy season, so we needed to build a little structure there, and the brethren there built that uh, themselves. Go ahead with the next slide. And this is a little congregation that's meeting there. You can see them wearing their mask, and they're holding up Bibles that we bought for them, and those paperback songbooks that we bought. So we started a new uh, project to build a new church building for them. And we built it a little bit larger because they're going to be using it for the night classes to train preachers and seminars and things of this nature. And the brother there in the blue shirt is Brother Hez Hezron Kilimanyama. I won't ask you how to spell that, but uh, Hezron Kilimanyama. And he's uh, heading that up and doing a good job with that. I think I got a shot of that. Yeah, there's the church building. It's now complete. Uh, that's an older picture. I, I asked him yesterday to send me some more current pictures. They've had their first worship service there, got the roof on it, and uh, doing good. Had a baptism or two already, but uh, that's a, a nice church building that we just finished. That's about a $25,000 church building that we raised funds for and got that one built. Go ahead. This is our container, one of them that we're working on. Uh, we uh, have a 20-foot container that has about 700 boxes. It's ready to go to Zambia. The small boxes in the front there are Bibles, correspondence courses, tracts, booklets, and the banana boxes have clothing and other things in them. We've got this one. It should be going out in the next week or two to uh, Zambia, and then one going to Malawi will be going out soon as well. And we'll be working on another one to go to Kenya. It costs us about $12,000 to send that over. But we get a lot of material in there for that uh, price. Go ahead with the next one. Here we are at the All Good Congregation, and we're having a work day. 
and the ladies and some of the men are helping us put boxes together to pack, to send for the container. All right, go ahead with the next one. We've got food relief. We do this. A lot of the areas that we work in, they have droughts every year. Uh, and we will send money to the preacher training schools and they will buy the grain and they will take the corn out and give it to the various congregations who in turn give it to their people in their community that are in need of food. In a lot of those areas, uh, each year there are people that literally starve to death because they don't have the government programs that we have to help and assist with droughts. But we are glad to do that. We send about $1,000 a month and help different areas uh, all the time uh, going up each year. Go ahead with the next one. Go ahead with the next one. There's just two or three slides here of uh, food relief. Go ahead. You can see some of those grab boxes, uh, bags. That's about 190 pounds. I think it's about 90 pounds of shell of corn. It'll feed the family of five for about a month. And in normal times of the year, about $12, $14 for purchase it. During droughts, they raise the prices. Sometimes it'll go up to $18, $20 a bag. But uh, that would help a lot of people get in the bag. Here's an elderly sister in Christ in Kenya that's uh, receiving a little thing of uh, cooking oil, a bag of rice, and some maize. And she's very happy to get that during that drought. All right. Uh, there's some more shots of baptisms in various areas. Just go ahead and rotate through them about every two or three seconds because I think all of these are just pictures of gospel meetings that we've conducted uh, this past year. Sometimes a small group like that sitting under a tree. Sometimes it's 500, 800. Sometimes it's two or 3,000. They're in a gospel meeting. There's 11 in Uganda, which baptized during that gospel meeting. Three in Kenya in September. There's another guy being baptized, young man. I think this is in Kenya being baptized. Uh, more gospel meetings, baptism. This young lady in Malawi obeying the gospel. And another one in Malawi. And uh, we'll stop on that one right there for just a second. And, and say that since we started International Bible Teaching Ministry in 07, of course we've been involved in mission work for about 30 years, but International Bible Teaching Ministry was started in September of 07. And with our partners helping us, like the brethren here at Fairfield Glade, we've been able to see 21,475 baptisms 16,954 restored, 543 new congregations established. Uh, that 55,000 should be about 60,000 by the correspondence course students, about 567 preachers to graduate, about 505 enrolled in our distance learning school with 125 graduating. We've made 36 mission trips to 14 nations. We've sent 67,000 Bibles, uh, 24,000 books, 96,933 Bible Correspondence Course booklets and over 2 million gospel tracts have been sent. As I said, we couldn't do this without your help. So this is your statistics, things that you've helped us accomplish, and the Lord has greatly blessed our work and continues to do so, and we appreciate it so very, very much. But as we end our lesson, the greatest need that people have anywhere in the world is to be right with God. You know, what should it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul, Jesus said. A lot of things are not that important, but our relationship with God is important. Doesn't matter where you live, uh, across from Tennessee or Zambia, Africa, your greatest need is to be right with God, be ready to die. We don't know when we're going to die. We don't know when the Lord's coming back. And how do we make preparation for that? By obeying the gospel, faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, being added to the body of Christ, being a faithful Christian. So when we die, or if the Lord comes, whichever comes first, we can hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what it's all about. Nothing is more important than that. If you're not a Christian this morning, we urge you to obey the gospel. If you look in your life and see that you're not a faithful Christian, you don't want to die in that condition. You don't want the Lord to return in that condition. If you need to make corrections in your life, you need to do so. For public nature, we give you that opportunity to do that as we stand together and sing. Out of my bondage, sorrow and light, Jesus.